force me to be in. <laughs> yes. She was in it last year, too. So. I know. <laughs> So my thoughts are, if we go through the bylaws tonight, I now 
I have this version that you have as a handout that has the response of the book group to what they wanted to recommend for the superintendents. And I think it would be good to go through that because then you have what you guys brought forward that night, what Christy brought forward, their response to all of that. And then you guys can say, we want our final version to go to the work group again that's going to meet the 21st, something, it's a Monday, coming up. Do you want anything other than what they've now decided they want to take forward to the superintendent, having heard what was said that other night and what you said? Do you guys? I, I, I think that, you know, like spoke with Frederick Sanders, the only thing that would have been nice was. Um, um, as far, my understanding was that the meeting, uh, there was no meeting because I know, you know, there was no minutes and I think, I know I couldn't, that it's Christmas week and we had office parties and everything that you have to go to. Um, and I, I think, uh, either, so, you, I did so not meet my understanding was that there was not a meeting. Was it a meeting or was it not a meeting? It was a agendized meeting. What is, what is, okay, okay. Okay. Well, what does that mean? So you had a quorum so, and there's minutes and everything? So Christy, here's where I'm confused, because it's explicit. And if I was to do that and hold a meeting and not have a quorum, some people that are very um, much, you know, strict adherence to the Brown Act would be all over me. Which well, has happened, happened to me. Happened to me. Happened to me. In, in that me. case, the and meeting more agenda. In my so are we going to spend the whole hour going to have? No, no, no. no. I just have no. Christy, Christy, I have an hour, guys. Christy, 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 that this sort of went through, when I saw this thing, and I had said, committee meeting, like that's not a committee meeting, and you know. I'm you not know. the one who drew this up, it was a committee uh, meeting. But, but so. was there a committee meeting? There are notes, there are There things. was an agendized meeting. But was there that a That the public was invited to. It was 72 hours posted. I did that too the last year, and forum. there was no quorum, and it was shut down. Right. So I, so, so I communicated to Susan that this was an official meet, was not an official meeting. So then, that's what I told me to do. So <laughs> that's where we need to start from step one. So if there was not a meeting, even though it was agenda, so those were the recommendations that there's no meeting. There are the recommendation of yeah. I didn't mean, choose how many people right were here. Who, I mean, no, that, that doesn't matter. It, it, was, it wasn't a meeting. It does matter because it looks no like a business meeting was held. And I'm not the one who put down a business meeting was held. Okay, well, we you guys had a business meeting. You, you, you taped that meeting that night. You did not post it because you didn't get the time book. But I, yeah. if it were posted, I would like I said, said yeah. I said that yeah. we don't have a quorum. Um, you were here, Gloria, and I don't have a quorum. I said, we don't have a quorum. I can say we can't move forward. The comment to me was, that we can have a discussion. I said, okay, I'm going to memorialize these comments, and you said, and I don't have much time because this committee is moving. So I took those forward. That's why I'm saying, let's make the best use of the time we have left. Let's take what was proposed to me, that I took forward to the committee. You'll see that they did not agree to very much of it. I'll tell you that much up front. And then let's just see what the group wants to do with each and every one of those comments, and I think we can make it exactly. done. Exactly. I think the whole thing was completely yeah. shut down last year when I did the exact same thing. Exactly. And that's why I said that we agreed to doing that, but if we just really want to put this on record, that right. this was a very And it's a committee effort. Yeah. Let's, okay. let's go forward. I mean, I have the meeting, well, I, I have the minutes, I have everything. I have been following. I wouldn't have a meeting if I didn't have a quorum. So I think, I I think the good news is, thank you for all showing up tonight, and, and your meeting, if you agree, Christy, I will go ahead and go down through this, and you can see what the, the comments were that I took to them, what they agreed to, so you can see. So you're following this yeah. next one? I think I'm going this one. Are they, are they? You have the document that looks just like this. Okay. In your yeah. That's what it's for. What is this one? Is that 
that's just code. Right? So there's two of these, I think. There's your side-by-side -side that I sent to you showing um, the code that the Because I didn't have this in my packet online. Right. This one. Oh, no, no, no. That's why we brought it tonight with um, a copy for the public. Carolyn Jersey. And so we've been trying to get by the best that we can. And so this morning I gave her copies and she made them in color. So now what do we do? Christine, you're more comfortable going on this one. Yeah, no, because I haven't seen this. No, no. I think this is enough. But this is what has a response. Christy, I think I've sent it back out to your book group. Well, they probably go side by side because they're all numbered. Right, we can just look at both of them.
Have you said that we have nothing to contribute that, that month? Do we still have to? No, that's why I say we, uh, we really don't have to. I would say it's only. How about this? Just one. Just this one, this one is in If you just be replace, place, you provide the article. But if you have to have your newsletter, just I would just say delete it. That's why I put delete it. So we don't have one. But if we delete it. If we got one at that moment, time, at that moment, then you say we say that we can have. No, of course you can. That, 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 that this is just time. this is just the goals. As you can see, this is under the goals have. of the CAC. If we're not doing it currently, then just but delete it. How long? But I'm proposing that we review CAC bylaws every year. So therefore, if it comes back into the scene that we're actually having a newsletter, it can be every year. But if we're not doing the bylaws every year, every year, and we did get yeah, every year, every year, they should be reviewed every, every other CAC does that. So 
the confusion here was prior to what? That was the confusion. And you were going to review it and then recommend wording changes. Do you have wording changes? It says prior to review. What would do we what that's review would be would that be? That's that's the, that's the question. confusion is. I would think it should say to review thirty days prior before superintendent of council approves. That's I that was my feeling because that's what I, I read it as prior to review. It's not like a capital R, but it's prior and, to and review. That, and because it's just not the time is the hard thing for for people. You know, we have the CAC that's going to have it 30 days before the superintendent. Is that Councilor Schmidt? Yeah. Councilor Schmidt, thank you. I think it's not a verb, it's sort of a noun. Do you believe that was the intention? I think so, it's not a verb over there. I think it's to be. To give you 30 days to see it before it goes to final approval. Right. Yeah. That gives us time to provide recommendations and advice yeah. prior to admission. For, and it then says for both initial plan development and subsequent revisions.
one parent from each district. Christy suggested two numbers for districts to share the loan and work on the committees, and Andrea indicated more parents might participate if they have a better understanding of the stuff that is going to um, And then, I had suggested current numbers may suggest perspective. No, I think this was out of our discussion. Current numbers may suggest perspective CAC numbers to the district, but we know that's not what happens. It's the selection process is determined by, the, by each district and approved by its governing board. That's that's the real process that it goes to the government. So we're taking board. out the current numbers may suggest perspective CAC and adding in the selection process is determined by each district as appointed by its governing and board. And they actually have a policy. Yeah, I confirmed that the district can actually have a district policy. So that's you would follow your policy. Anyway. And approved by the governing board. Um, Christy recommended that we have additional agency numbers and it was the last sentence of the paragraph. So this was the most important part because I don't know if you have it down there in the gray part. I went home and I talked to some other CACs and found out you know, the way we're doing it isn't really the way that it's supposed to be done under the Ed Code, yeah. which is we have people appointed through governing boards, but in our current bylaws, that's not the case for all members appointed to the CAC. And there's no exception. So, <coughs> um, I don't know if that, I think that's under appointment, but I get to that, right? 4.2. And so. So it's cute. The community advisory committee should be composed of parents and individuals with exceptional needs in public and private schools, which we have, parents of other pupils enrolled in schools pupils and adults with disabilities, but regular education teachers, which we have a vacancy right now, special ed teachers and other school personnel representatives of other public and private agencies which we're working on, and persons concerned with the needs of individuals with exceptional needs, which hopefully we all are, and at least the majority have to be the parents of the students with special needs. Um, yeah, so that was there, but it, I guess it was under 4.2, which is the issue of um, all appointments are supposed to be from the, from the governing boards of each district. So my suggestion after the discussion that we had, <laughs> the discussion, quote unquote meeting, um, was that we adhere to the Ed Code, and that's the only way that people get appointed is from um, each of the school districts, including from groups, including teachers, and you know it could be two or three people per per district or something like that. I also was talking to um, a CAC member from another CAC, and they recommended that you have some some standards in order for a person to be put on the CAC, as far as you know they have to attend a few meetings or something like that before appointment. You know, like two or three meetings. They were surprised we don't have that. <laughs> so, which, which self is that? Which self is where I'm talking to? Yeah. San Francisco, Sacramento, LAUSD, for instance. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's the big thing there is that my recommendation would be you know, all these sections we have about how we put on public private agencies under 4.2.3. Okay, but let's stay with 4.2.2 and get that resolved. Mm -hmm. What was said at the meeting on 12.16 is the work group recommended no revision because it's a vital that the CAC representative for a district be connected to the district or their credibility and effectiveness would be affected. And that was in response to your comment that you would like anybody to be able to approach I think you use Mount Baldwin as an example. Yeah. And say, I'm interested in representing your district. They didn't have to live there, work there, or have a student there be an employee. And they felt, because when a district has somebody, like, you're the board member, you're representing your district. Sharon's a parent, Edith's a parent, Clinton's a parent, they're representing their district. They're part of that district. So they, they didn't see, and again, the nervous system, I'm not trying to make a phone call. I, I'm cautioning you that in the end, we need to take something to the superintendent that may reflect some changes that 
that are wise choices to them. So they're going to have to approve whatever it is. So I think to say to them, we would want to just be able to see somebody that has no connection to the district is not going to fit well. And it might right. Have, and that wasn't. And it might have to be the lead of Tracy. I have been on MVP lists all over the city. Even if they're or anybody approaches us as a representative for our district, they have a concern, they have a question, they want to know. I am involved. We are involved. We know who to refer them to. We have information about our district of what's going on, the needs. So we are the connection to them. So if I went to your district and say, I want to be the CC for Central, you know, I am not involved in your district. But so to me, it makes sense to know that that you know what what she's bringing up is something that took place during the discussion, and like I'm trying to explain, I went home after mm -hmm. we talked to several CAC people, and they said, "Oh no, that's not the way. That's not the way it's supposed to be done. This is the Ed Code. It's supposed to be from each governing district. Mm -hmm. So all these appointments that are happening, you know, whether it be from teachers, whether it be from uh, public private agency, it's supposed mm -hmm. to come through." And it does not. Each district. And it does not. No, it does not. Then we have a teacher representative. So how does, I mean. Currently, like for a teacher. Right. It goes in front of the PAC. According to our bylaws, it goes in front of the PAC. Right. Names are kind of thrown around, sure. and then the superintendents vote. And That's, saying, there's no call for that in, in the ECO. It's supposed to all come from a governing school district. Now, how come you do that? But you know what the problem is? Now, the the problem is we have multi-district multi suffering. Multi multi right. right. So in a single district club, so that would make sense. You have one board, but my board that I answer to is the superintendent. So you could say that we're meeting the law. It's just that it's a different board. board. No, it's not the no, governing board. The district's not the governing district, 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 according to Edgar. But, but when you're opening it up to a representative to From represent, the 10 school districts. Yeah. So you said like a public private agency can be just voted on. You want it to be voted on just by optional school districts. We say we want this one. Right. Like this. So you so my proposal mm -hmm. to follow Ed Code mm -hmm. was you say each district has two or three from each governing board that they can appoint, their board can appoint to the CAC. As long as we meet the Ed Code as far as there being a majority of special ed parents on the CAC, that's the most important thing. So if Alpha Woman wanted to put a public private agency and a parent, they could do that. Central wanted to do a parent and a, a you know a teacher, they can do that. Whatever we decided as far as how many. That to me sounds like a huge number. What if Chino has three and everybody else has one? I'm concerned about the balance. Of and I think, you know what the main difference is? But they would all be able to get a certain amount. It's I, I, up to their board. I think you make a point. I think this, this design, uh, not recently, but a while ago, I was looking at some CAC you know, uh, bylaws and everything. And, and it tr truly was between multi district sampers and single district sampers. There was differences. Obviously, we want to stick to the same goal. I mean, you know, yeah. that's, that's on the point. But there were these differences, and I think maybe so, because I, I think the issue would come up then. Chino Valley or you know, Chino Valley is the largest district. I mean, so what if they say that, you know, I mean, we, we can be one, two, or three? I mean, and no, I mean, the CAC can designate a certain amount and say each district is, is allowed two or three. So they would just pick a non-public uh, agency? Is that is that? Yeah. It? They they would just, just, as long as you meet the ed code of having majority special ed right. parents, that's the most important thing. Right. But how would, how would we sort of uh, It kind of sounds this? like it would circumvent our current process that we that we want to have. I was just saying, how does that, what does that do with the um, private agency having somebody like that whole it's, it's no longer. It's no longer an issue. Well, see, my because question is, if the board if Chino Valley right. says that, board says that, you know what, we want a public agency, public private agency. Right. And board Mesty says, we want another one, a different one. So how do we sort of fix, I mean, how do we? CACs have one public or private agency. An agency that's providing social mental health supports to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then we have to go back and change that as well. Because it says there's one. Yeah, that just sounds like a huge number. 
number of people, and we have so many, so many out there that we are just like kind of like, really, but really we do lost. have a lot of work, too. Yeah, but so. I think the problem is not so much the work, but it's that all and forever the people who are going to volunteer and will do are very, very busy people. And it's not the work, it's just the time. And I think if we can work in arranging meetings better and make a schedule, like in this month we'll have a meeting for this and this, we can really get things done a lot more. What I think it's the music that we yeah. have to do. She didn't put this in there. Right. Yeah. But um, you you have from time to time people that show up to the public for your different standing committees like this. Yeah. Right? And, and you can certainly put those people to work alongside you. Right. They're just not the official members of the committee. Um, but I think that's the difference. Right. Because then we have the imbalance of voting with the word voting. Okay, that's, I mean, that that's, would be my that's my that's point. Right. Point. Yeah. right now we have two districts that opt not to have a member. Right. And then, so mm -hmm. we, we don't want but that's their choice. So if we have more of the agency, or whether you want it in one group, one right, and for voting, that is going to be a fair way. If we don't have, you know, more parents or so. To me, it just feels like we need to work more on scheduling our meetings and distributing work better, because we can get it done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's just to me, it, it opens the door to a lot of things that we will have to work on if we do that. I, I, I'm, um, I'm confused. Um, if you have enough people to get done, how come it's not getting done now? It's just there's the too many meetings. The, the conflict of meetings, uh, somebody, somebody will call, that's send an email. Some, right, that's okay. Okay. It's okay. It's somebody will send an email on the Friday, uh -huh. then once meeting on the middle of the week, the following week, and there's two or three days for people to arrange their schedule. Mm -hmm. So it's the time. Whereas we could get things more We're organized, I feel, in their schedule, then we would know ahead of time. And moving it back. And we're doing good. Exactly. We're moving on. And what you guys have We've had a lot. We've done a lot. Right. 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 Your guys' right. majority. Right. 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 And it's just organizing, I feel. But yeah. if each district um, has two or three people that they're able to send, that wouldn't there be more of a chance of somebody, you know, at least one of those people is bound to have that time open to well, come well, and we, get what it is is that we have people come. Yeah, we have anybody can participate. Exactly. I think what we're looking for is like, the problem is you have 30 people, and here's the problem. Yes. Yes. If you put 30 people, then we yes. might never have a quorum. Yeah. yeah. Have a quorum without After, people. like, like we have the, the, the subcommittees. In my committee, we have five people. We have five CDC. And we have done, um, yes, we've done enough. and we, and so I have given her that job, and I have given somebody that job, and I have done that job, and then, so, you know. So it's, it, we get it done. We've done stuff. I think the parent Administration yeah. Committee truly has shown us that yeah. you know it, it can be done. We all participate in different committees, so we always have a group of people yeah. in each committee to get things done. Right. So, okay, so onward, is your guys' consensus, consensus that this goes through or does it go through? I think I, 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 my hope is for one person. I, I, you know, I just want to put it on the record that I, I highly suggest that we get in alignment with Ed Code. That and under 4.2, yes. that's that's exactly what I wrote down, 56191. And it's and it's very clear that it's the governing board of each participating district. So it's not the superintendent's well, council. It is each governing board yeah. of each participating district is the only agency who can appoint CAC members. They do. Why doesn't that no, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't Correct. Know. I don't yeah, correct. I but not teachers. And not, okay, that's not how teachers are right. Are, are I think the teachers board bring, bring this to the CAC. But then that's there, they're, they're not doing it, because I had to go with yeah, my governing board before I got an invite. You know? Right, but yeah, but this, but we're talking we about any the whole bylaw term. Yeah. Did we appoint the teachers, what you're saying? We did not the No, the, the PAC. The Superintendent Council did, because you're having one teacher, you can have one student for our bylaw representing all the districts. Um, well, what are you going to do? I see what you're saying. It, it causes a conundrum because you've got. It's almost like we have to If the person goes code. to their board and gets approved, but the superintendent's council hasn't said, yeah, we'll go with that one to represent all 10 of us. Or this could be the flavor of the law. It, are we, you know what I mean? Like the spirit of the law, rather. That's what yeah. you call it. Is the spirit of the law this is the governing I, board? I want to do a little more work on that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, would, would it be too I much effort to just have?
have the, the, the teacher go through the, whatever district they are, go through that governing board mm -hmm. first, and then come to mm -hmm. superintendent council, if that, if that. The superintendent's council well. honestly shouldn't be involved in this whole process. But that is well, that, that, that's the CAC yeah. bylaws that belongs to CAC. But that's your interpretation because well, that's they are the CAC's an advisory too. arm, just like fiscal and, and programs. They don't have a vote on their own. All three of you go on advising to the superintendent to advise him. But there's of their policies. There's we advise them of their policies. But They're not supposed to advise the CAC of our policies. But they determine what the bylaws will be in terms of the composition of the group and all of that. I respectfully yeah. disagree. But okay. <laughs> Let's move forward. Okay. We were on. So yeah, so as you can see, 4.2.3, um, mm -hmm. that's the way a person gets in um, through the executive committee, you know, and then ultimately we would like superintendent's council. My proposal is that wouldn't happen anymore because it would be each governing board um, makes the appointment. And mm -hmm. when you go on to 4.2.4, mm -hmm. teachers, it tells you right here, program advisory committee recommends to the superintendent's council. That wouldn't be anymore. So I guess what the clarification needs to be, right. Susan, is that who exactly is our governing board? Is it because we're a multi-district district? Is the superintendents our governing board, or does it go district to district? Right, and, and I think once we once we get that clarification, I think uh, as long as I, I think we all agree that we don't do not want to violate a code. So as long as uh, we meet that, um, I think I'm I'm comfortable with the way we are. The other thing I wanted, I wanted to make sure I threw in there as far as membership and all of that was, mm -hmm. I think there should be some standards. That's my opinion. I didn't add this anywhere, but I, but I, I think there should be some standards rather than just a district willy-nilly appoints whoever. That somebody comes and shows interest. If they come and they show up a few meetings, you know, at least two, maybe. For the you know, I totally get your, I get that point. Because you've had people show up and then they leave. After well, we scare them away. We yeah. Scared yeah. Scared yeah. Them. They should know what they're in for. But if, if, in, if we are trying to let the district bring the person that, and maybe that person is super involved in their school, with their right. people, and, and let me say, the spirit of our district, we want this person to go. But right. that person doesn't know what they're getting into here. Mm -hmm. So then I think they, I think it should be, they can, they can send anyone they want, but if that doesn't work out, they should then get someone on, or fit. Talk them up before they show up. <laughs> but I think that we've had some really good scare. That if they yeah. came, then they probably will say no. Because it might sound like a lot of work. It might seem like a lot of work. And if we are having not a very positive meeting that evening, or the next two meetings, <laughs> then it will totally, we will lose the opportunity to have them. them. Well, not positive. I mean, well, they, know, well, the a lot of discussions. Misses, the district misses the opportunity for their, their district to be represented the way they want to. So procedures that I've written. First, you inform the committee for consent that Ed Kevin the appointment of parent student publication to the members. She is of the opinion the district governing board is the only body to appoint our superintendent council to members. You mean currently? Our, our students mm -hmm. council approved currently. Oh. So you're saying. I don't know if you wanted to add in there something about you were going to check if the governing body, if the governing board is indeed the superintendent's council or governing body board of each district. Yeah. Which one? Mm -hmm. Each district. Mm -hmm. And by the way, With we might office. all be pleased to know yeah. under 4.2.6, can we delete that under board of education? I'm writing myself off too. So <laughs> I would no longer be a member of the CAC Why? if we went forward with, because each board needs to, you know, according to the actual ed code, each board needs to appoint who sits here as a member. So if that's the case, I'm no longer a member. Because your board didn't approve you? Well, no, I'm not. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just here because I'm a board member. That's it. That's according to our bylaws. But if we write it according to Ed Code, everybody who is a member here has to be appointed by their board. I think so unless my board appoints me. Voting members. No, I know, but I'm saying I wouldn't be a member under this. It, unless my board appointed me. That's 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 that's
of exhibition yeah, you know, so yeah. you're getting rid of you and Mo all in one swoop. Right. So, I don't want you. I no, we want to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need to follow Ed code. That's good. If my board wants to appoint me, great. If they don't, then they know. It doesn't really matter. I'd rather follow Ed code than anything else. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the big one. I feel like we were trying to find out a lot of I, I think your comments that you just made really were applicable to 4.2.4. I mean, that I just wrote down. What? About those other meetings. I know, I I really think that is more appropriate. Who is the official board? Well, that that can go anywhere, but the parents, teachers, students, all that. Um, four point two point four talks about teachers. So I think it's it's better to put that. Okay. And then it, it goes on to the students. Just clarification on um, who is the official board for Ed Code. Yeah. Christy, you wanted us to delete four point two point three. But that's only yeah, that's, that's based only, on you know, yeah. 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 we could do that if we went to the board appoints everybody. Right, right. right. The board right. appoints right. everybody, right. everybody didn't change, then right. it needs to but, stay here. But the SCO also calls out those specific types of members, and I don't want you to lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. Say that? I'm oh, sorry. The SCO calls out teachers, right. students, right. all those varieties, and I think that's why we have specific items to remind us that we need to have this yeah. Well, that's why I have written um, here, if you go back to 4.1, calling out all of those particular groups. I think it's better here. when you have a separate item. It's so it's like, like, God, did we do this? We need to be specific. But either way, we still have both. Um, let's go on to 4.3. The term of office. And um, you had said 4.3.1, replace parent representatives with CAC representatives. I think we still, right now, the way we have it written, want to make the distinction of who's a parent representative, who's a teacher representative, who's a student representative, who's a public agency representative. Otherwise, we lose sight of this. What was the thought to change it just to CAC instead of parent or teacher? Based on us it's changing it to, you know, districts can appoint, their board can appoint whomever. So it might not necessarily be a parent. Mm -hmm. So it would be very general. Yeah. Um, CAC representatives. Um, and since none of that was really agreed on, I don't Yeah, this is true. 
Okay, so we'll keep my role committee will continue to work on the time and get
and then we'll have to go to interview and panel resources. Under yeah. purposes, yeah. Susan, for the immediate past chairperson, is something going to be written in there? You know what you would put down if they're currently a member of the CDP. Oh, okay. So it's they clear. Serve on okay. Them, you know because so obviously, I like Martina isn't going to come to the executive right. committee. So, so I can leave that on it. Um, chairperson no changes. Chairperson elect would no longer serve as a parliamentarian and will serve as the chair in the next term. The vice chair would be related to parliamentarian. The chairperson is seeking to and focus on the agenda and follow parliamentary procedures and those required by the Brown Act. Well, actually, sorry, I think that the and, and chair elect over here would have to accept that position because what if they didn't want to? But I think somebody I else would have to Because you just said there wouldn't be a vote <coughs> automatically, and what if she didn't accept that nomination? But I think it would be like part of the decision and the or acceptance of chair elect, because we know that that's your training ground. You accept me, but you are, but you still yeah. might want to take it out of. because you know. Life changes and you yeah. know just just things, so yeah. you still might have to keep it. Six stuff will be proud of treasurer, secretary, uh, elect chair, and immediate past chair. Mm -hmm. And so those people rotate chairs every year. They move up one chair yeah. until they run. And so I do that for ours too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. But I will. Um, well, that's how they do it. Our who is our current chair elect? And who is our current vice chair? We don't have one. Oh, you don't have one. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody raised our hand. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the first who came to us. Well, because remember, we're still under the old employee of the crew. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I know. I'm just saying. So, you too. And you might be in a situation where, as we're in transition, if these become effective, let's say the terms make everything. So like Bruce, when it's all signed by the board and goes to the state, we might have to continue our current process and go to the two. So we'll just have to work through this and see what we can do. So if so we add language to describe rural. Oh, you want to know our secretary? Um, <laughs> what do you want to know? Ding, ding, ding. That's what I want to be the that's the whole reason. <laughs> um, add language to describe the role of the half chair. Oh, sorry, Sam, so what's that? I, I don't want to change the last sentence. I just want to tell you why I don't want to change the last section of the sentence. If you guys decide to, then you do. But here's my um, two cents. Um, I just happen to be the secretary. I'm very in case you didn't know. <laughs> but, um, Designating some of my tasks to the staff rather than somebody else makes sense to me because I had a secretary on the board that I was president of who delegated things all over the place and all the minutes came to be jumbled up and they weren't in the same fashion and they weren't up the, and it was really just difficult for me not to have somebody doing everything. So when I it wasn't consistent. And and I'm a volunteer. And this board, especially if it's gonna grow to 30, it's already big enough for me to look at. But when I can say to her, run downstairs and get that posted, did it get posted? I can't run from my house downstairs to post something. Mm -hmm. So and can you email this or that? So we talk about these minutes. It's not that I'm completely blind to what's happening. When someone calls in, they're not coming. I know this before I show up most of the time. Sometimes I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. and most of the time I know this. I review the minutes before, I send, before she sends them out. But I like the idea of having somebody not random people, but somebody doing it that's more consistent than perhaps the volunteer who might have a throwing a child or a back to school night or whatever my random excuses were last year for not showing up. She was still here. She's like, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense to me that we keep it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I agree with that. My, my logic for doing that is it's no secret to any of you that, because I've been saying it for years, mm -hmm. that I really like the CAC to do things. CAC does it, and you know that it's that it's our CAC, yeah. and so that's the that's the reason I put that forward. But it doesn't have to be changed. It's not a make or break for me. It is a suggestion. So, so let's move forward. Consistency. Uh, and and I'll share my perspective as I get that. That I feel like the more we're a collaborative effort and a joint effort to have transparency, I think it's going to spill over. We're not hiding anything, and we know you're not hiding anything. You're just fine. Um, so, 
perfect. But what's going to be done, I think, should be agreed upon. The venue, right. because it's because it's representing us. Yes. If it's representing yes. CAC and SELPA, then we need to be a part of that. But how it gets done, so yeah. So this is the most important. This is the most important. So yeah. I'd like to give you an example. Okay. This year, um, we were unable to see the application for the cup final as we had COVID in the last year. Um, there are a few little things and problems that have gone in the application. It was a good intent, but it's important that we see it before we have a really good time. Well, I think or if it's something with our new that you should at least be able to. Yeah, so I, I want that going on in my office and right. I know, you know, the community and the SELPA has had a chance to make sure that it's what you would want to go out. So that's just one small well, example. No, but that part is not pretty it's not going to fix it. No, but I mean, how they set it up and how they do that. the decorations they choose with the cookies versus the cupcakes and all the details of that, I think, should be that committee to work at it. Oh, but, but if you where it is, what it is. Right. Those things and proofreading anything that goes out with our name on it. Yeah. And where and where it is is not hopefully not going to change too often. I mean, I like last year. Before, so did, was, did you were you able to put that down to them? But she said. Well, I think it, 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 is there anything we have to put out in the wording? Mm -hmm. Well, well I think that I agree with everything you guys said as far as what they should have liberty to after mm -hmm. other things, but but they don't out. feel very. I, I know that committee. To a meeting that wasn't a meeting, <laughs> and you know, official meeting, I guess. And Wait, was there a forum? There wasn't a forum, just like with mine. So it wasn't. Actually, there, there wasn't a forum. forum. Yes, there was. Was there a forum of the, the committee? committee? That that whole well, what's that? Was it a quarum of the committee? I don't think so. Was it? Was there? Liz was there. I'm not a voting member. I don't know. So yeah, it was Liz and then Steph. So I don't know how to quorum. It was just the incident condition on the agenda. There's nothing that is specified one way or the other in there. Well, which one? There's nothing that is specified one way or the other. They'll assist in planning, organizing, and promoting this event. It will assist in the solicitation of nominees, assist in judging, and the selection of finalists for the art and writing contest. I just, I guess my recommendation is that we add to this particular paragraph whatever is necessary for this committee to come in front of the whole CAC to get approval of before they move forward on it. So that's clear. And then they know they're at liberty to, with everything else. Maybe we need to develop a process that we all agree to. This sounds a lot like what we're trying to get done with ad hoc versus standing committee. Right. So we can't say for this committee only you could be ad hoc, but for every other committee but you have to be run by Brown. Right. Except for if you don't have a quorum, then you don't have to run by Brown Act. Unless, I mean, that's, we, I just want it even. Like what right. they did, I got completely smacked down for last year. What we're trying to say is okay for them is what isn't okay for my group. I just want it even. This is back and to our ad hoc versus. And that's what we're back to Brown Act. Act. And that's why I really think we could expand standing committees and have more person. Yes. We, yeah. And you have. Uh, well, this is a good point at which, when Christy's reviewing the bylaws, can we change that in our bylaws? Yeah. We can. That really would be worth it. This is the time. And then we don't have this, the bylaw says, what the bylaws will say. And quorum, no quorum. What so, you're, so you're suggesting that none of these standing committees that, that exist, we, that we get rid of them, or? No, make them ad hoc. But I guess you have to get back to the definition of an ad hoc. We I mean, should it's the task force. It's just the agenda is. But these are actual things that are ongoing, so they so fall under the definition of a standing committee. And That's the problem. And I think the thing with the art and writing contest, it all falls back again to organizing the dates. If we were to get this May in our last meeting of May, the topic and the dates for next year art and writing contest, mm -hmm. we can put it on our brochure and have it ready to go. And then we can start meeting in August, September, and so on. Same thing with the presentations for my committee. I want to have the topics in May. So we can do the brochures in the summer and August all our teachers will like to get the schedule. And if we get that, we're fine. It's all about we're behind time. And if we get it done and make the topic for the art and writing contest, we're gonna be fine. So we're gonna get there because you're gonna push this. But ladies, we are late and I realize that I just want anyway, I don't care if you're okay because you have to get high notice over this seven thirty. So role of the sub administrator. It it has. Wait, what do we decide? 
Okay with 8.10 that um, individuals can attend certain service training? 8.10 service training that individuals can We just changed it to individuals, they were okay with that? That's any 
anybody? The Any public is now going to come to our meetings? In service. Trains. And the then then their district it be the one I mean, this is this is my so members It's my job to provide information concerning in service training the individuals they wish to attend. So it's my job to make it public what mm -hmm. trainings are out there so people can go. Oh, okay. So we didn't want it to just say CAC in the book. Okay. okay. Because we're we're informing a lot of parents to get like 40 parents and they're not yeah. members, right? So oh. it's communication. Okay. Yeah. Effective date of the bylaws, then the superintendent's council approves them and that changes to the bylaws may be proposed to the community advisory council for approval by the superintendent's council. All changes shall require a two-thirds vote of all committee members present at a regular scheduled CAC business meeting. So when we get to bringing the whole plan to you guys, you have to agree by two-thirds vote. But then I go to the superintendents and I say, here's what they approve, why well, take it to program fiscal and then speak to the okay. So I'm, I'm sorry, so they, they want to keep it that way, so if only two people from the committee show up, or three people from the committee show up, only you know, two of them approve and it happens? It doesn't have to have a form. We could plan meetings for forever, and it's not the way things are going right now, and we have. But if we plan to plan meetings, we're going to have eight people here. Well, so the thing, people the here. thing is, though, um, you know, one of the arguments is that you have to have a quorum to even have a meeting, period, right? So, no, for that. well, I know, but that's, you know, seems to be, you know, that's what's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So right. it, it, bothered, it bothers me as a parent that, you know, bar laws can be changed by a two thirds vote without a quorum. It, it, it seems to me like that should be, if it applies to just a basic meeting, right. it should definitely yeah, apply I to think that. I think you're protected because we can't even have a CAC business meeting if we don't have a quorum. So then you would just clarify in there that if you have to have the meeting, that the quorum has to have a meeting, it makes sense to but here's just clarify in here. Well taken. Right. We wouldn't even be meeting the one place unless we have a quorum. So we have to have at least five people. Yeah. Meet to do the eight. So we have to have at least five. <laughs> and it would have to be two, two thirds of five. those people. It says that clearly. So you can't have a meeting, period. At a regularly scheduled CAC business meeting. We cannot have a regularly scheduled CAC business meeting without a quorum. So no decisions would be made if quorum wasn't there. So it's kind of a moot point in that way, right? You know? I suggested a change to this one. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it there. Um, Consider a quorum required with the majority vote of those present. This is under 9.3, right? Yeah, um, the one in yellow. Um, the, to the changes to the bylaws may be proposed and oh. approval of changes required a vote of the CAC members. We felt that bylaws, CAC bylaws will be reviewed at the main meeting every year. New bylaws may be adopted or these bylaws may be amended or repealed with the approval of the members from the CAC by a vote of the majority of the members present at the regularly scheduled May CAC meeting. However, bylaws may be amended at any time. But that would be if you had autonomy from the superintendent's council. This, yeah, this takes out the superintendent's council, which is, this is based on, um, this write-up is directly from Moreno Valley CAC. But that would never happen to a person. Any professional can do that. Okay. Well, I, I just want to point out that most CACs, they, they approve their own bylaws. They don't have the superintendent's council to the, approve their bylaws. The CDE requires that the bylaws are an integral part of your local plan. Right. right. And the superintendents approve the local plan. They approve the local plan. Right. But not the bylaws. That they're part of the, the, the local plan, but, but they get approved as approving local plan, not CAC bylaws separately. But they, they would take the issue with, you see what I'm trying to say? They would take issue with the content and therefore not approving it until that was changed. Or they would override what had been in the proposed bylaws and change it however that would need to be. So my concern is you guys can propose that to them if you want. I think we want to go with, let's start where we can get some action that we know they'll approve. And
and shed them and get things from moving forward, we want to work with them. And if we get to a point later where that could be part of our culture, that would be a great. I'd like to keep doing it, but I, I don't see pushing that right now. And again, like I said, I'm not trying to get hit, I'm just trying to protect, you know, because I don't want you guys to take something and have to go, no, 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 no. You know what I mean? Um, I so I have, I have all your notes in here. Okay. They're going to be all of that. They'll know what was proposed. They'll know um, what the decision was. Okay. Um, you're gonna, just a few other things she suggested, add sexual and translation oh. services and child care, and the group said no change at this time. This is the allocation. Oh, <laughs> the child care part is on my agenda because it was on my talking about to talk about. Mm -hmm. okay. So that will be talked about and then brought to the meeting. Yeah, okay. I mean, you're not going to see it, but I've been at my right doing research on And that's stuff. a practice of the committee, not to be right. 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 Um, Fiscal and logistical support of the community advisory committee. Chris, you had said you would like the fiscal allocation plan to be revised to include sexual and CAC with Ed Coast statement about fiscal and allocation. Um, right, because that's an Ed Coast, and I quoted that there. And I had said, without it being stated, we do support. Mm -hmm. And I would advise you and caution you to be careful for what you ask for. So you'd ask for a budget, remember, after that fiscal allocation plan meeting? Well, yeah, we got the, CAC, the full CAC meeting had a discussion about it, right? Last COVID meeting. We had a discussion about it. Right. And and we were um, told, be careful what we wish for. So if yeah. we get a budget, then That's we surpass our, surpass our budget, we're out of luck. Mm -hmm. If we ask for something now, we're basically getting what we asked for. Anyway. So if we want more copies of this, or we want more of that, they're giving it to us. They haven't told us no yet. We're paying for the translator to back to that budget is for you in a budget ditch. So at this point, we haven't been told no. At the point where we start getting told no, then I think we start saying, okay, give us a budget and we'll decide what's important to us. Well, I, I can't really speak for Mo, but I do know she brought up some concerns about the fact that her district and the art and writing is incurring costs, for instance. So we have offered, right. So do I don't know the background, we've the brought details. Them.
Yeah, we need to turn around. 